All right, we are on section 2.2, .2, factors affecting rates of reaction. And if you take a look at the warm up, they want us to compare the reactions in A, B, and C and circle the one with the greatest reaction rate. Um, and if you take a look at A, we have a solid marble chip. Um, calcium carbonate reacting with three molar hydrochloric acid at room temperature to produce a calcium chloride solution, water, and carbon dioxide gas. We have powder marble chips, we have small chunks, and then we have large pieces. Which one would have the greatest reaction rate? Well, the powder would because this has more surface area. In B, we have glow sticks, and glow sticks have got uh, two chemicals inside of them, and one of them is held in a breakable capsule that floats inside of the other. And once you break the capsule, the reaction happens. It produces energy in the form of light. And glow sticks are put in different temperature water baths. We have hot water, room temperature, and ice water. And the hot water bath is going to produce um, the fastest reaction rate because there's more heat energy, and that causes the particles to move faster. And then in C, we have alkali metals reacting with water to form a basic solution in hydrogen gas, and sometimes the reaction is so exothermic that the hydrogen gas can burst into a flame. So here you'll notice we have lithium, sodium, and potassium. Potassium seems the one reacting the most violently. So this one is more reactive. than lithium and sodium. Um, why would that be? Well, let's think about periodic trends. If you look at the periodic table, and we think about um, ionization energy. Ionization energy is um, the ability of um, an element to lose uh, electrons. And ionization energy increases up and to the right on the periodic table. And if you look at the locations of lithium, potassium, and sodium, they're group one metals. Potassium is further down on the left. And that means that potassium has a lower ionization energy which allows it to lose its valence electron more readily. And that's why it is more reactive than lithium and sodium. If you turn the page, we're going to be talking about factors that affect the reaction rate. And um, the more particles that you have when a reaction uh, originally starts, um, the more particles you have to collide with each other, and you would expect the reaction to happen faster. And there are, generally speaking, three factors that um, can be manipulated to increase the rate at which the particles collide with each other, come together, and produce product. The first one is going to be surface area. The second one will be the concentration of reactants. And the third is going to be the temperature at which the reaction is taking place. Now, different chemicals have different reaction rates simply because of the nature of those reactants. Um, and if you add a catalyst, you can speed up the rate of a reaction. Um, but we're going to talk first about surface area a little bit. If you take a look down here, you'll notice that um, when we have reactants in the same state, 
it's uh, homogeneous, but when they're in different states like solid, liquid, gas, the reaction is heterogeneous. And heterogeneous systems usually involve the reaction of a solid with a solution or a gas. And um, when reactants come into contact with each other, only where they meet between the two phases um, is considered where they're coming into contact and decreasing the size of the pieces will increase the area in which they are contact each, contacting each other. So if I increase the surface area of a solid, I'm going to increase the rate of a heterogeneous reaction. And here you can see they are cutting um, the number of pieces into um, smaller and smaller sizes, so they are increasing the surface area as you look at the figure from left to right. Let's talk about concentration. So the rates of all reactions are affected by the concentration of dissolved or gaseous reactants that are present. And when more solute is put into the same volume of solvent, the concentration is logically going to increase. And that means you're going to increase the opportunity for particles to come into contact with each other. Um, if more gas particles are placed in the same volume of a container, that means we're increasing the partial pressure of a gas. And um, so when you double the concentration of um, gas particles, you're doubling the partial pressure of gas. And if you take a look at the next page here, you'll notice that we have a gas sample and um, we have increased the concentration of particles in that sample of gas. And if we decrease the volume, we can also increase the concentration and the pressure. So here you have two times gas particles present going from A to B. And um, the partial pressure of the gases also increased by two. And in C, when you lowered this piston to decrease the volume by two, the gas concentration and the pressure increased. Okay, so increasing the concentration or the partial pressure of a gas will result in an increase in the rate of a chemical reaction. Um, but what you should always remember is that the concentration of pure solids and liquids cannot be increased because Adding more substance increases both the moles and the liters, so the molarity remains constant. Um, also remember that crushing or breaking a solid will increase the surface area, but it's impossible to cut or break a liquid or a gas into smaller pieces. Um, the surface area of liquids can actually be changed by spreading it out over a larger area. If you take a look at the temperature, here, when we double the temperature, we double the kinetic energy. That would be the motion of particles in a sample. And um, that's because the particles are going to strike each other more frequently, and um, they're going to collide with more energy as well. So an increase in temperature means that the same particles are going to travel faster they're going to hit more frequently and more forcefully. And as a result, temperature is the most significant factor that affects the reaction rate. If you take a look at the graph here, they're showing you kinetic energy on the x-axis and the fraction of particles that have that kinetic energy on the y-axis. This first curve here, this peak right here, is showing you the kinetic energy of most particles. And 
when the temperature changed, that curve shifted. So this is now showing you the distribution of kinetic energy as the temperature increased. And the area that is underneath these curves should be the same since the number of particles hasn't changed. Here, this gray shaded region underneath the curves is showing you the particles that have enough energy to collide successfully and produce product. had very little energy, some of them had a lot, and if you look on the next page, a common generalization is that if the temperature increases by 10 degrees Celsius, the reaction rate should double. And that's true for some reactions that happen at room temperature. And why is it that increase the temp increasing the temperature is going to result in an increase in the rate of the reaction? Well, there's two reasons. The first one, you're going to get more frequent. And the second one, you're going to get more forceful collisions. Okay, now let's talk about the nature of reactants. Now, chemicals are all slightly different. And depending upon their states of matter and their complexity, you can predict whether or not those processes will take place between reactants quickly or slowly. So generally speaking, if you have simple monoatomic ions, like a silver ion or a chloride ion, those kinds of reactions are almost instantaneous because these ions are really, really mobile. They're really, really close to each other. They have opposite charges, which attracts them to each other. And there is no bond rearrangement that has to happen in order for them to react. But if you have a more complicated substance like this acetate ion, that one's going to react slower than these two monoatomic ions together. So generally speaking, Chemical reactivity is caused by, um, well, are we having to break bonds? Are we having to form bonds? What's the ionization energy of something? What's the electronegativity of something? Um, do we have ionic or um, is there a molecular polarity that's present? What's the size? What's the structure? Um, but generally speaking, if you take a look at the states of matter, at room temperature, substances that are dissolved in water are probably going to react the fastest followed by gases, then liquids, and then solids would have the slowest reaction rate. If you take a look down here at these two images, they're showing you how quickly a precipitate will form from two cations, so a silver ion and a chloride ion in close proximity to each other with opposite charges. Since they're monoatomic ions, they should quickly form a precipitate, whereas if you have a silver ion and the acetate ion, which this is a lot more complex, these are going to form a precipitate more slowly. Let's go to the next page. And let's talk about catalysts. Catalysts are substances that speed up the rate of a reaction. They are not consumed. 
what typically happens is you're going to have a reaction that takes place in multiple steps and a catalyst will be consumed in one intermediate step, but then it'll be produced in a later step. So that's why they, could, they say it is not used up. Typically, they do not include a catalyst chemical formula within a balanced chemical equation, but sometimes you will see the formula for a catalyst above an arrow between the reactants and the products. Enzymes which are produced by living organisms are catalysts. They catalyze digestive and biochemical processes. You probably talked about that in biology. Um, inhibitors are species that reduce the rate of a chemical reaction by combining with a reactant to stop it from reacting in its typical way. And pharmaceuticals, um, a lot of them are inhibitors. Drugs that act through inhibition are called antagonists. If you take a look at the sample problem here, they say which of the following reactions is faster at room temperature? You have a gas combining with a solid to make a gas. You have a monoatomic ion combining with a more complicated polyatomic ion to make a solid. Um, I would say that B is going to be the one that happens the fastest. And um, in terms of list two ways to increase the rate of each reaction. Well, for this one, you could increase the surface area of the iodine solid. You could also increase the temperature. You could also increase the concentration of this hydrogen gas. Um, and you could add a catalyst. If you're trying to speed up the rate at which B happens, you could increase the temperature of B. Um, you could also increase the concentration of the barium ion and the sulfate ion, or you could go ahead and add a catalyst to that as well.